So I'm John Presenti. Uh, I lead a, a company called Benevolent AI. I'll tell you a bit more about it uh, after. My background is uh, uh, I've been in AI for the past 18 years. Uh, I was I created a startup that was acquired by IBM and then became part of Watson where I developed the, uh, uh, the platform there and I was a big part of the R&D. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, our company. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you about is, is the problem. Okay, I need to go, stay close to here. So the problem is that uh, you know research and innovation actually uh, output is going down. So I have two little graphs there, kind of interesting, is that the cost to put a new drug uh, out there to discover a new drug has been increasing by decade, as you can see out there. You know, in the 70s it was a few hundred million, uh, a few hundred million bucks. In the last decade, it was around 2.6 billion dollars. Uh, if you even look at scientific discovery as a whole, there are economists now who argue that. If you look at the green line, which is the number of researchers that are working on research problems, and the blue line, which is our increase in GDP, it shows that our innovation per researcher is going down almost exponentially. So our view at Benevolent AI is that we need to use new technology to improve the way people do discovery. And the first application of that technology is to do it for drug discovery. So we are a British company uh, uh, that was founded uh, three years ago. Uh, we actually have raised a substantial amount of money, around $87 million at the moment, with a nice valuation. Uh, we are around 70 people, and I'll show you divided kind of in, in, in two sides. Um, and we're trying to do some things that has never been done in, in bioscience to really accelerate the way people do uh, discoveries there. And we're just across the road, so you can almost see the, the roof from our office from here. Uh, aqua across Houston Road. Um, the company actually is an interesting uh, setup. So we are really two companies. I actually lead the benevolent tech aspect, which is doing software engineering and AI. And what's really unique about the company is that we are actually trying to use AI to do discoveries within the company. So I, I, I don't have to hype AI. When I was at Watson, I did have to hype AI and sell it. But here, we don't have to sell it or hype it. It doesn't really help me. We're actually trying to use AI to make new drugs. And so the, the proof of the pudding is in eating, which means we really have a, a plan in the next three years to put, to have a certain number of drug programs out there, on, you know, around 50 programs. And what's really unique about it is that we are really focused on de delivering the value of AI rather than just kind of hyping it and selling it. Um, and so that gives us kind of a unique focus on this end-to-end -end use case of saying, you know, I'm going to use these technologies, I'm going to make uh, facilitate discovery and I'm going to make this discovery and I'm going to reap the profit of this discovery rather than just creating yet another uh, software platform. So it allows us to be very, very targeted on, w on this use case and making these scientists uh, much more efficient. The other advantage we have compared to uh, a standard uh, platform is that we have the scientists in the organization. If you ever work with scientists doing drug discovery or other type of discovery, they're very particular people. Uh, they're very tr difficult to convince to use actually software to help them. And so I believe that the only way to do what we do is to have the scientists in-house and work with them actually days in, days out uh, to get them to optimize their process by using software. So uh, at this point, actually, we have made some good progress. We actually have a platform right now uh, that people use. So they get in, you know, in the morning, they come, uh, they interrogate a system uh, that gives them a view of the current knowledge and makes prediction and help them come up with new hypotheses for new drugs. Uh, thanks to that, we have actually have you know, uh, more than 20 validated hypotheses at different levels. Uh, we even have actually one drug that we're going to put in clinical trial phase two uh, this year. Uh, so I, mean, I could tell you after this, if you're interested, I could tell you the whole process that works. Uh, we have actually even licensed out some drugs at, at earlier stages. Uh, we have a bunch of patents as well. Uh, and so we're, we're actually making this real at the moment, you know, using the platform, generating new hypotheses, and uh, putting the drugs out there, either licensing it out, or trying to test them ourselves through in vitro, in vivo, or clinical trial testing. Um, you know, the technology that we're using is, is kind of interesting. We are analyzing all the literature out there, the patents, the, uh, uh, the clinical trials, and we're trying to basically get a view of the existing knowledge. We're using a lot of machine learning, NLP to do that, uh, trying to understand, you know, what, you know, how people talk about chemical entities, drug disease out there and then figure out what the relationship between these uh, entities are. And then from that set of existing knowledge, the system now makes prediction. We're trying to predict basically what will be the clinical trials and the, the drugs that people put in market in the next five to 10 years. 
by looking at this knowledge and finding the implicit links that people haven't seen. You can think of it as, you know, if a scientist could read uh, 10,000 papers, they could actually make connections that a scientist that reads just, you know, uh, one paper a day could do because you can read, you know, paper that links that, that disease to that gene in one journal and, and, link and look at this paper that links that, that gene to that uh, compound molecule in another journal. But if you don't read both journals, you will never make that link, where the computer reads everything and can make this kind of link. So we have a system that by finding all these, uh, these links can make new hypotheses. And then we help the, uh, the uh, drug discovery scientists make, validate this hypothesis by doing, you know, using machine learning to do predictive and generative biochemistry, like you know, how can we predict the property of molecules and then come up with new interesting molecules. So we have lots of very interesting problems always trying to attack them from the machine learning angle, you know, learn from data, uh, use, you know, NLP techniques, use, um, you know, data uh, crunching techniques, you know, normalizing the, 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 uh, the data, understanding the domain, et cetera, et cetera. Very, very interesting problems. We are, we're trying to, you know, the strengths of the company is to combine multiple approaches. You know, we have designers, we have product managers, we have engineers, we have AI scientists from the NLP side, the machine learning side, and we have people doing, you know, biology, chemistry, and drug discovery. So the, the key of the company is to put all these people together and get them to create one platform, one process to create new drugs, okay? And our big problem at the moment is that we need to hire. So we have actually have big hiring goals. Uh, we intend to be one of the really powerhouse in AI in, in the UK. Uh, we have big funding and we are uh, about to get more. So we have big hiring goals. And so if you're interested, uh, here is shameless promotion, so. Uh, and another thing I would say is, I, I, you know, there was a bit of news on Sunday that uh, I'm actually been tasked by the UK government uh, to actually uh, come up with a set of recommendation for the UK on how to become one of the, the top country for AI. So if you have some interesting ideas, I mean, the reports will be published in July, and I'm the co-lead for it. And if you have some ideas on how we can do that, uh, please contact me on LinkedIn or after at the networking event. Thank you. Are you hiring? Yes. <laughs> Other question. Yes, it's interesting. Like even today, I was telling people always ask me that question. So what I would say that at the moment uh, we are actually not quite yet there because we're. Really, the, the scientist is really in, in the picture, so we're trying to generate stuff with multiple evidence, multiple papers. But actually, I, even just today, we were thinking of what algorithm we could do to try to vet the papers as well. So to try to get bet on other papers, how much trust we put in, in the validity of the paper. So I would say at the moment, we have not really tried to address that, uh, but it's actually in our pipeline to think, well, can we actually use the system because we have a view of, we have a general view of knowledge, so we could give you a view back as to you know, is it an outlier paper or there's good validation from other papers? Right now it's implicitly done because when the, the scientist looks at, at a connection, we give them all of the evidence and they can see it coming from multiple different papers. But it's a, it's a very good problem, so. Yeah. Question, yeah. It was, yeah, my, my question was largely the same um, on reproducibility. I mean, if you look at cancer, for example, there's something like 70% of landmark papers which are irreproducible. And, you know, it sometimes takes five years to kind of unwind the evidence. And so to some extent, I'm curious as to whether your system has a higher probability of turning out hits, even um, bearing in mind these intrinsic biases and reproducibility that you might see, or whether over time you're going to develop your own ways of scoring um, the validity of results. I mean, you know, I, as I say, I don't really, I mean, and, and, and it's, it would be easy for me to say we wouldn't have the bias that they are in the literature, and obviously we have. Yeah. One of the big problems also is we, we wish uh, there was not the publication bias because we'd love to get more negative results in the system. So one of the things the system does is process all the negative results as well, but there are not many out there. So it is, you know, it is, it is a big issue. But, but our perspective is to generate a lot, a lot of good hypotheses and be extremely selective. So we want to make it that process coming with a good idea much easier so that then after you can be extremely selective and ex extremely skeptical. So you can basically kind of kill your ideas much more then the standard process where people kind of tend to st stick to an idea and try to validate it and find good evidence that it's work and ignore the, uh, the contradictory evidence. So but these are the good questions. One more question. Yeah. Just curious what your focus is. 
So the corpus actually is uh, things like publication, patents, clinical trials, and then there's a bunch of biochemistry uh, databases out there, you know, you know, uh, just, you know, Campbell is a list of, of molecules, you know, these properties. So we try to kind of crunch everything we can get our, our hands on. And, but the challenge after is to kind of normalize all this. So there's actually a lot of very interesting data. And this is why actually we have this kind of hiring need because there are lots of ways to attack the problem. You can look at it from a modeling standpoint. You can look at it from a physics, from a chemistry, from a biology standpoint. You can look at it from a structure standpoint, and a structure standpoint. So there's all these, and ideally what we feel is that it's by combining all this together and combining the evidence that come from all these different perspectives that you'll get the best results. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Thank you. Just up the microphone.